Welcome back to the channel. My name is Abel and welcome back to Football Manager 2021 and Eastern Resurgence 2 with Stalwart Bucharest. We do have a European playoff today. Not going to tell you yet what competition it's going to be in. I'll go through all the results that have happened off camera, the qualifying matches that we've played. But I've left it on the facilities screen because I wanted to try and find out what was happening with this new stadium that was proposed. And uh, as it stands, they're just looking for a new site for it. And the capacity will be increased to just under 39,000. So we'll get about 9,000 new seats. I think it would have made more sense to expand the current stadium though, because that's only 10 years old. So I would hope they're going to use that for something else. Otherwise, if it's getting knocked down after 10 years, that's not good because they rebuilt the old ground. I would have liked to see that one ext expanded rather than another new stadium. But, you know, I'm happy we're going to get some extra seats and we'll get some more money from that, so that's good. And also, I believe the facilities are currently in the middle of being sorted. Yeah, they are. So they should be done uh, by the end of the year. So we should have, I think that might be the maximum new facilities. I think that will be up to state of the art. But it might be excellent. I'm not quite sure. But, you know, they're, they're going good. So that's fine. If you're enjoying the series, as always, drop a like down below and leave comments. They're the best ways to support the channel. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do subscribe and do turn on notifications. Um, let's see how quickly we can get to 1,050. Because I've been floating around the 1,020s for a while. Um, it was great to get 1,000 subs. We want to keep that running, though. Let's see if we can get to 1,050 soon. So if you remember last episode, uh, we haven't got off to a great start this season. We lost the Super Cup against FCSB 6-5 after extra time. And then we lost our unbeaten run in the league in the opening fixture as we lost 5-4 to Hermannstadt. We were 4-1 down, brought it back to 4-4, but then immediately Tudorake scored a fifth for Hermannstadt. And we lost 5-4 and that brought an end to our 54-match unbeaten run in the league. But it's fine because we'll just start a new one beat and run and see how long we can go this time. So no Invincibles this season. At least we've got that out of the way. Let's just see if we can win ourselves a fifth league title. We're going to play seven games off camera. We'll go through the goals shortly. But first of all, let's go through transfers. So George Yon has completed his move to Leeds United. He did pass the work permit. I thought he would. So he has joined Leeds United. Um, for £10 million. They triggered his release clause. He's played a couple of games for them so far, but 60 appearances for us and a great left back. And it's, uh, yeah, it was sad to see him go. Romeo Treclair has left the club. Uh, he uh, was one of the players that have come in in our youth intake in the past few years. He's gone to FC Vitarol for £325,000. Played one game for them so far. He just never really um, grew. He never really grew out of that like two stars and the same with Vladic Petre as well a player that we signed in 2028 from Astra Georgiou um, and didn't play very much for us went on loan to Petrol last year was okay and he's gone to Academica Clinchenny for £700,000 and another one is Alexandru Dobre who has gone to Bekek Skaba in Hungary and that's for £170,000 another player that came in in a youth intake that just never really I never developed, but I never really gave him minutes. He played two senior games for me a couple of seasons ago. Didn't really impress. And yeah, he just never looked like he was making any progress. So uh, he's another player that has left us. And also, Alexandru Evdekim has left. He's gone to Gazmatan Medias. We recouped the 1.7 million we paid for him last season. As soon as he joined us, pretty much he wasn't happy because we made a promise to improve, I think, midfield that we never did. Um, so he started off being pissed off, off with us from the word go, really, and just wasn't very happy. So he's gone and we got the money back for him. So no real loss there, apart from, you know, wage, which wasn't that much. And now on to the ins, and we start off with Jonas Popovici, a player that you probably have heard me say quite a lot during this uh, series. He's been at FC Vitarol since 2027, and we've signed him for £2.5 million with a youngster going the other way. Um, a homegrown player that can play on the right-hand side or up front. He's very quick. Um, technique's good. First touch is good. Mentals are okay. He's aggressive, but, you know, the ones that matter. He's okay, but he's got great pace. His crossing's not great, but his finishing's good. So he can be a good, maybe, sort of inside forward player. Or he could play as a centre forward. Uh, he did get injured in his debut. Uh, was out for a couple of weeks, but he's now back and might feature today. We'll have to wait and see. This is Pedro Wapaya, who is a central attacker midfielder, just 19 years old. He's come from Sport Boys in Peru and looks very, very good. And he's already improving physically, which is great to see. His dribbling is good. His first touch is good. His passing is good. His technique's good. All the attributes that matter are really good. So I'm really pleased that we got this guy in. Like I said, he's come from Peru uh, for £700,000. And I'm excited to see what this guy can do. He looks good. So hopefully he will be a great player for us. 
Alexandru Putzintelu is a 17-year-old. He's homegrown and also a central attacking midfielder. He's cost us £350,000 from Crayover. And again, looks pretty good. Maybe not as creative, but, um, you know, first touch is good. His technique's good. He's got good balance. He's got good vision. Flair's not too bad either. He's only 17. Plenty of time to grow. And we'll see if we can um, grow into a, a good player that can be of use. And this is the player that I'm hoping can be the midfielder that we need. This is Vít Jursa. He's Czech. We've read the Czech Republic again. He's come from Sigma Olomouc for £61,000. Very, very cheap fee. Uh, and as that deep line playmaker, he will hopefully be the uh, the replacement for Nedele or the upgrade on Nedele. He looks great. 16 first touch and passing. 17 technique. Great decision making. Good physicals. I really like the look of him. Lacking a bit in some of the mentals, like his anticipation. But that decision making is really nice. He's determined. And those technicals as well. The first touch and the passing and the technique at 16 and 17. I like the look of him. And the final signing for now it is from South Africa. We've gone back to Africa again for a left back. Innocent Makaleli is his name. He's South African. He's come from Sundowns, uh, as have a couple of players uh, during this uh, save. Uh, left back, great passing, great tackling, a little bit of speed about him, good stamina, great mentals, good teamwork, bravery, uh, good work rate. I like the look of him. Would have liked that crossing and dribbling to be a bit better, but as a fullback on support, I'm sure he can be great. And I think what we're going to be doing is having Makaleli on the left back with um, Chechi Rodriguez, the youngster. We're going to push Sergin Goran a bit further up to be a left winger alongside Pavelka. So I think that's what we're going to do. But we do have plenty of money in the bank. And if we do need to go back and get one more player, it probably will be a left wing. That's all the transfer news so far. There is still a bit of time left in the window. So we could well see one or two more players come in. But now let's go through the seven games that we played off camera and see what happened with them. Costanza with the corner kick. Nigar with a header and Malalake at the far post. He's playing a rare game and he's given Stahl with the lead in the 22nd minute. Nedalea heads it on for Martina and it's Pavelka and the keeper gets a hand to it but can't keep it from going out and uh, Pavelka doubles the lead in the 36th minute. Nedalea back to Bisiste. Simeon and that's the ball for Pavelka to Martina. Sergeant Goran's going to come forward here. And it's Pavelka and a first time shot with the left foot beats the goalkeeper and it's a third. 3-0, two minutes to go. Stauer home and dry here for the first win. Pavelka with the corner kick and Nigal with the header and the set piece goal gives Stauer the 1-0 lead in the seventh minute against the Cypriots. Pavelka with the corner and Nigar has won the header again and doubled the lead. Half an hour in, two headers from Nigar makes it 2-0. Angel of cutting inside here. Find Sergeant Gore and his Pavelka and Cosmin Din's through and Din gets the third goal. 86 minutes, Stauer 3-0 up now and uh, looking like they're going to maybe get through this tie quite comfortably. Simeon on the corner and Nigar has done it again. A hat trick of headers and it's 4-0 with uh, just about 90 minutes gone. Well, for the winners of this title, it'll be either the New Saints of Wales or Olympia Ljubljana. Star, of course, currently 4-0 up after the first leg. And Pavelka does make it 5-0 on aggregate. And it's 1-0 in Cyprus in the 12th minute. Nedalea. And the ball over the top. Pavelka's got it again and beats the keeper at the near post uh, with a minute left in stoppage time. And it's 2-0. Rodriguez with the throw. Here's Pavelka to Nedalea. Martina. And the ball through to Nigar, who gets the third on the night. And that is 7-0 on aggregate. And Stauer are comfortable winners in the Champions League qualifying. Alili to Negoescu. And here's Nedalea. And Nigar through here. Oh, straight into the hands of the keeper. Zubale. Goes back to Nedalea. He's going to get it back. And Cosmin Din's there. 36th minute. Stauer lead 1-0 in Sepsi. It's Brown to Savage. Armstrong. Edwards, Grayson Brown, great save by Zivanovic, great save. I think Stauer will ro rotate in the side so heavily. Silver, what a save by King. Bissi's day wins the header. It's Agustin, Ibanescu, and intercepted. Here's Catalin Nigar. Here's Rodriguez to Nedalea and Goran. And he's played through Catalin Nigar. And Nigar scores his first league goal in the 36th minute. It is 1-0. Rodriguez to Ngoran. 
And ball up for Catalan Nigar, and he's put it over the goalkeeper. Cheekily, 49th minute, 2-0, Nigar with both goals. Martina to Nedalea. Great ball for Kristin Elbotta. And a switch for Angoran. And a good chance here. And Nigar has got himself a hat-trick. And it is 3-0 in the 55th minute. Nigar with his first three league goals. Ball headed on by Dorofte and his Stana. And it's Diamande and Arad do have a consolation goal in stoppage time. It is 3-1. No clean sheet this time for Stauer. Pavelka on the free kick here. And a header on goal. It's spilled by King and Amadou Silva scores in the 42nd minute to make it 1-0 to Stauer here in Wales. Armstrong. Ball forward. Easily cut out by Elili. Here's Martina. And Silva. Great control and a great finish. And 45 seconds into the second half. It is a 2-0. And Silva has himself a second goal. Here's Brown. And Stauer looking a lot better in this tie. They did rotate a lot for the first leg. And Armstrong where the head is. Ivanovic can't quite keep it out. And with less than two minutes gone, TNS have scored a goal. 2-1. Nedelea shot blocked by Stewart. Here's Martina. Silva to Nigar. And Silva's got it back. Is it a hat-trick for Abadou Silva? It is in stoppage time. It is 3-1 now. Stauer looking a lot better in this second leg. So the first leg uh, against the New Saints did end goal. We rotated a lot for that game. We played a lot of youngsters. And I probably shouldn't have done. We drew 0-0. But luckily, second leg in Wales, we did win 3-1 when I played a stronger side. After losing that first game to Hermestat, we have won the three games since then. So we sit on nine points. But FCSB so far, four wins from four, sit top of the league table. And as you can see on the right-hand side, uh, we have drawn Astana in the Champions League playoff. So we're going to be facing Kazakh opposition. And if we win this tie, we'll be through to the Champions League group stages. If we don't, we'll drop to the Europa League. But hopefully we can beat the Kazakhs. So let's see how the other Romanian sides did in their European competition. So FCSB, are they still in Europe is the question. Uh, no, they are not. They lost to Kukariki. Serbia? Yeah, Serbian. That's unfortunate. So they lose in the Europa Conference League third qualifying round. FC Vitorol lost to Dnipro in the third qualifying round as well. They uh, defeated NFC and then lost to the Ukrainian side. And Hermannstadt lost their tie to Rapid Vienna. So once again, we're the last side left in Europe for Romania. So it falls to us to do all the work. But today we're going to do the first leg against Astana in the Champions League. We'll do an extra video uh, probably tomorrow where we're going to do the second leg and see who we draw in the Champions League group stages or the Europa League group stages, depending on if we go through or go out. In injury news, Luhan still a few weeks away from his return after a torn calf, but we hope to see him um, very soon. Uh, Cosmin Din is recovering from an ankle injury, so will be unavailable for uh, this game, but hopefully will be back for the next fixture. Uh, Negoiscu is out today with a knee injury, and Gabriel Toma is about a couple of weeks away from his return from the broken ankle he suffered at the end of last season, so close to a full bill of health. And this is the side we're going to go for in this first leg against Astana. Zivanovic stays in goal. And Goran, Basiste, Alili and Zubale that are back for. Going to stick with Martina and Nedele for this. But Vidjusa is on the bench and could feature. Uh, Wapaya is going to play in central attacking midfield with no Din or Toma. Simeon's going to be on the bench for some cover there. With no Nagoisku, Popovici returns at right wing. Pavelka is on the left. And Katalin Nigar with his seven goals in eight starts starts up top. And we do have Amadou Silva on the bench who did just score a hat-trick as well and here's Zubale on the ball with five minutes gone and the ball forward for Martina and out wide for Popovici who of course he got injured on his debut so we'll be able to see what he can do here today and he's still coming forward here he finds Pavelka and his Martina and he's uh, forced Pavelka out a long way out wide there and Goran the cross is cleared by Benkovic and here's Emre Moore an actual real player in 2030 I know Emre Moore still got it and Zubale is going to stay with him. Oh, he's <laughs> he's not giving up, but they eventually... Wow. <laughs> I was about to say they eventually get the ball away. And Frederick Jensen has just scored a thunderbolt for Astana to give him the lead and an away goal in the seventh minute. I have fair play to Andre Zubale for keeping on Emre for so long, but he couldn't do it all by himself. And this volley by Jensen, that is a well-hit strike. And that's going to be a bit too much for a bong. And Zubale is going to get onto that. I'm sorry, it was in Goran on the other side. Not um, Zubale. Wrong side. Wapaya. Popovici. Out for Zubale. Going to stay up for the overlap. Nedalea. 
Zubalaika cross Pavelka with a header equalizes uh, barely a minute after Astana's goal. Okay, no more away goals. I don't want to concede any more away goals. Let's just make sure we win this first leg. Nedelea, I mean, we pass the ball around well there, and then Pavelka gets up for the header to equalize. Popovici gives the ball away. But Alili is going to maybe start an attack again here. Nedelea. Back to Arland Alili. That's a great ball for Popovici. Can he find a cross for Nigar or anyone? It's Wapaya. It's Pavelka. And the keeper manages to get to it in the end. Martina to Wapaya. Can he find a ball for, for Nigar maybe? It's Popovici. It's Pavelka. It's 2-1. Pavelka with a second goal in the game. He's already got seven this season. He had a tremendous year last year. And this year he looks to be doing just as well. As we take a lead with 26 minutes gone. Let's see this again then. So Wapaya definitely instrumental in the build-up of the goal. Uh, and in the end, that's a good ball back for Popovici. Gets the assist for Pavelka as the two wingers combine. 2-1. We haven't had nearly as much possession as we have in recent games, but we're looking at the better side. Astana have had just one shot on target, which they did score from that really good long-range strike by Lit Jensen, but we look to be the better side. We're having a bit more of the ball as we enter um, half-time, so that's not a bad first half. Well, Niga has had one of those quiet games today. He hasn't been able to do too much, which will make me think about changing him to something else rather than the advanced forward. He has been doing really well, but I think if we change him up to something else, we could do even better. Uh, but for now, we are going to replace him with Amadou Silva. 68 minutes gone. We're about midway through the first half. And Goran with the cross. Popovici heads it down for Nedelea. And Goran with the ball back again here. He's got a few goals in him. Martina, though, has goals, and it's hit the crossbar, and it's cleared by Cardozo. 15 minutes left of the 90. Still 2-1. We have had plenty of shots, and here's Wapaya. Got a clear sort of goal here. He's got to shoot. He does shoot. The keeper can't clear it, and Silva gets his fourth goal in two games to make it 3-1. 75 minutes gone, 15 to go, and we do look well on top now in this first leg after going behind. I think Wapaya just took too long. He could have shot there, and I think he would have had his first goal for the club, and the shot was blocked in the end. It fell, fortunately, to Silva. He scores a third for us. And Popovici has taken another knock though. So we'll bring him off with 10 minutes to go for Kristen El Botta. And we'll also hand a debut to Vitz Yursa, who's going to replace Nedelea. Into four minutes of stoppage time. Here's Zubele with a throw to Wapaya. And Zubele gets it back. And the long ball. I think Silva might have been offside. But we'll see. It's, it's on target. But it was a good save anyway. Here's Diara to Zionis. And Astana would look to try and get another away goal in these last couple of minutes. They're keeping the ball. Here's Gorbanov to Diara. And we've got to watch out here. Cardona. Still like two minutes to go. And another away goal for Astana. Could prove costly. Long ball. Up for Cardona. Who's one on one with the keeper. Good save by Zivanovic. Wapaya. Maybe one more chance for a four. But Burak wins the tackle. And that is full time. It ends 3-1 in the first leg. Uh, I think we dominated the game. Uh, Jensen with the, the, the wonder strike to give Astana the lead. But other than that, didn't look too good at all. And I think we deserved the win. Would have liked maybe some more goals. But we did more or less match our XG. So that's a good performance in the end. Just to make sure we don't do anything silly when we travel to Kazakhstan. But that's a long trip. So it might be a tough one. And we'll make that trip to Kazakhstan tomorrow. We'll do an extra Friday video. Why the hell not? So we have got one game in between against Crowover away from home. So we'll play that off camera. And next episode, we'll have the away leg against Astana. Uh, see if we can get through to the Champions League group stages for a second season in a row. And if we do, we'll find out who we're going to face as we have the draw. And if we lose and if we go out, then we'll see a Europa League draw instead. So whatever happens tomorrow, you're going to see a group stage draw for Europe. Hopefully it'll be in the Champions League. Hopefully we can avoid defeat in Kazakhstan and get through to the group stages. If not, then we're going to drop to the Europa League. But that wouldn't be the end of the world, but some Champions League football would be nice. But anyway, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, drop a like down below and leave comments. They're the best ways to support the channel. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do subscribe and turn on notifications. And yeah, next time we'll have the away leg against Astana. And we'll see uh, where our fortunes lie in Europe, whether it's going to be in the Champions League or in the Europa League. Whatever happens next time, we'll have a draw of some sorts. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.